So the idea behind of the piano book is to create a、um, album which is all my favorite pieces from the very beginning of my career and kind of like growing up with those most well-known,、uh, most standard、uh, repertoire. And sometimes it's a very challenging when you perform with something is so familiar with, like everybody kind of know about those pieces, and that makes more difficult to make a interpretation, yeah, because people have their own thinking of those pieces, but we have to do it because those are masterful pieces,、uh, and、uh, we have to.、Uh, Record and I also I would like to share those、uh, pieces which inspire me so much over the years to the next generation. So、um, it's the pieces which uh, uh, I try to remember what I did in the past, and also I'm trying to combine with everything I have learned over the years with the different pieces by the same composer, like. Beethoven, for example,、uh, like Mozart, for example, you know, after learning every major, I mean, maybe not every major work, but the, a lot of major works, and coming back to the very beginning,、uh, because there's a, a direct link,、uh, and also over the years, I have a pretty much set mind of how to do those pieces、uh, from my own understanding, and and so so therefore, I'm. I walked into the、uh, studio with a very、uh, kind of、uh, concrete、uh, ideas of what I'm going to do. I mean, there's nothing that I got so fr- afraid.、Uh, I mean, of course, there's something that I think I can do better later.、Uh, but、um, my next big project is the box Goldberg Variation, which、uh, is a piece I, I love so much. And、uh, I played many years, but I haven't performed yet.、Um, so, so this is a really the piece which is、uh, in my mind, in my heart, in my soul. You know, to play in the highest level as I can. You know, and so, so for example, like tomorrow, I'm going to meet a, a great uh, keyboard. Uh, Artist、uh, Andrea Steyer in, in Cologne. So we are going to work on、uh, part of the Goldberg tomorrow in his apartment.、Um, so I like to to get closer to the Baroque way of playing, especially for the ornamentations.、Um, so so things like that. And then I think in the future, of course, I want you know up somewhere.、Uh, I would like to do the. Both Brahms concertos、uh, and then complete the Beethoven、uh, concertos, and also to do as many Beethoven or Mozart sonatas as possible,、uh, if it's not complete. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely, because I I kind of get inspired in this way from、uh, the great. Uh, conductor uh, Nicholas Hanumkor, which I had a great privilege to work with him on the Mozart project, and, and it's quite different when you hear those、uh, like Scarlatti or、uh, Bach or Handel or you know or any Baroque、uh, composers on the original instrument. It sound sounded、uh, very authentic,、uh, and then it, it's a really great、uh, plus for us. Uh, to root it、uh, on the more authentic style,、um, so certainly that helps a lot, I would say. But in the end of the day, you still need to adapt those period uh, uh, instrument to the piano because piano get uh, uh, really e- evolved quite a well,、uh, quite quite a lot, you know, from、uh, 200 years back or 300 years back.、Uh, It's a quite a different instrument now compared to the period instrument. So you still have to know how to play those styles on the modern piano and to make sound connected. But it's also it's a pianistic sound. Yeah. So so that's yeah. So that that's a a challenge. It's a real challenge. And、uh, and I, as you see, there are many great baroque、uh, players on the piano.、Uh, people like. 
the wonderful Andrea Schiff uh, or like Marie Pariah, uh, when they record Bach, they, they have a type of sound which kind of you, you feel the extremely traditional with the you know the, the, the period instrument, but in the same time it has a, a real piano sound. Uh, so I think that's a very ideal to, to look into it. So of course, same as uh, Glenn Good, uh, it's the, he even trying to make the p modern piano sound more kind of uh, you know uh, drier sound, uh, and that's I think that's the idea of you know to make more closer to the uh, to Habeas word. It's, it's kind of gradually, I would say. I mean, it's not like one event it, it, because it's an ongoing process. And until today, also, you know, sometimes you don't find yourself or you don't find an in interesting interpretation, you know, in this repertoire. Um, then, then I have to find a way to to discover something, and maybe it's a la lack of uh, knowledge or something. You, you you need to find what's the the, the problems, well, what's the reason. And every concert is like that. I mean, every concert you're trying to do your best. Uh, you want to give everything you, you can uh, to share the moment. Uh, but then sometimes you think you can play better. You know, you, you know there's something, some parts, or some kind of a mood, or some sort of a style. Uh, you, you kind of know when, when it's a good concert or when it's a kind of a okay concert. It's a quite different. Uh, uh, level between you know, okay is very easy to to get, good, it, it's hard, but a lot of people can get there. But exceptional, that something you you have to to get gradually. It's hard to be like okay tonight I want to be exceptional. I mean that's it's, it's not not working like that way. You know you need to clamp, <laughs> you know you know cl clamp gradually. Meister Barnboim really uh, bring me as a person to a, another level, you know, because he he's so knowledgeable and he th there's a lot of uh, musicians who can really deliver what he want in or or she want in, in his or her playing, but there are very few artists can really tell you why you have to do that and 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 also to give you the the guidance, uh, the guidance for for uh, for future. Barnum is certainly up there not only for his uh, great musicianship, but also the way as a thinker. There are many uh, artistic ways which he really made it possible into the keyboard for me, you know, or to, to think into a much deeper, much more thoughtful, uh, uh, much more genuine way. You know. Maestro Hanumkur, I mean, he is someone, he's a real, truly musical genius. Um, and uh, he also has this most passionate, uh, most creative mind. Even though sometimes, you know, people think he's a very traditional way of making music. I still remember the first time when people heard that Maestro Hanumkur and, and me, you know, play a concert tour. They, they thought this is not going to work. They were kind of laughing, like, are you serious? Like, your way of playing and his way of thinking, is that going to you know, come together? And of course, I'm very confident because I learned so much from his articulations and the way of his interpretation, especially on Mozart, Beethoven, Bach. I mean, this is like, you know, I mean, when I work with an orchestra like Vienna Philharmonic, no matter who you are, you know it's hard to change their sound because they are so incredible. They're, they're, they're really the top of their, you know, of their their game. But when Maestro Hanukkah start to uh, rehearse, seems like Vienna Philharmonic, even for them, it's another orchestra. <laughs> sounds so different. 
<laughs> and I, I just, you know, it's hard for me to understand how, you know, in the beginning, like how can they be so different with, a, you know, that type of sound. And of course, that's the, the magic of uh, Nicholas Hanukkah. Here, we, what you're supposed to do, and this is you not supposed to do. So he felt that in classical music, he, uh, he got uh, locked into uh, a little box. So that's why he want to basically, you know, to, to be Herbie Hancock. Uh, and, but this is really funny. You know, this is a lot of, lot of time happens in classical music, you know, the, the, when you have a very uh, stiff uh, professors or teachers. Uh, you, you get reluctant in their, wor uh, their world, uh, hard to be free. Um, and so, so, so the first rehearsal when I had uh, the, um, the Ravel um, forehands music, Mother Goose, and Herbie was looking at me, he said, can I do this? Can I do that? Can I play this soft? I'm like, Maestro, you, 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 know, you, you, you have the most amazing color. You are asking me whether you are allowed or not. I said, w w I mean, I said, well, why you are so polite? Why you are so modest? I thought in classical music, <laughs> it's not going to work in this way. I said, of course it works. I mean, uh, listen to Horowitz or Rubinstein. I mean, they always have a unique color, of course. So, so in a way, you know, I learned so much because he he is incredible the way he can took a melody and just play like I never thought about before. Like, like what we did, uh, whether it's classical music or, or, or like Leonard Bernstein or, or Gershwin or Juan Williams or Ravel, you know. The way he can do it, it's just something that we would never imagine in our world. And he is there to do it. And, and that is really, for me, it was a, it was a kind of a open door experience. And, and also the way he can play this control of a spiritual sound. It's unbelievable. Um, I, I, I love working with him and I, I learned tremendous uh, joy to making music. I think it was good, I mean, uh, because I had a time to, to reflect. Uh, on myself, uh, and also time to think more um, kind of the future. I think sometimes when you take a little break, it, it's a really healthy thing to do. Because uh, your first break maybe from the Not my break. first break, but uh, it was, uh, was uh, the, the, the longest break, <laughs> let's put it this way. Yeah. So, so, you know, I also had a lot of time to you know, do other things, education, and to listen to so many symphonies, and so so in a way that I'm more patient these days. You know, after you know now play again, I just feel more breathing. You know, more air, and I think I play better now. I I, I really think whether it's the break <laughs> or something else, I I feel that I have a more things to say in the music somehow and get more mature. I mean, the, all, all those are, all those are in most incredible, you know, uh, musicians. Uh, but honestly, if I, I can do it, I probably will talk to Franz Liszt. And the reason is quite, quite simple because he's the piano god. You know, I mean, I, <laughs> I want to talk to him. <laughs> <laughs>